Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about phospholipids and then glycerol phospholipids and even more. All right, the phospholipids, they're in a family of lipids that's very similar in structure to those triglycerides. They include the glycerol phospholipids and the sphingomyelin. So you have your glycerol backbone, you have two fatty acids, you have a phosphate head and an amino alcohol. And so this would be the anatomy per se of the glycerol phospholipid. And so let's learn the differences between them and how to figure out what they are. Okay, so in glycerol phospholipids, they're gonna contain the two fatty acids that form ester bonds with the first and second hydroxyl groups of the glycerol backbone. And then a hydroxyl group that's gonna form with uh, form an ester with a phosphoric acid, which forms another phospho, uh, IS, phosphoester bond with an amino alcohol. Okay, so we're gonna have two fatty acids linked to the glycerol backbone, and then that's gonna be linked to a phosphoral, phosphate head, right, and an amino alcohol. When you have sphingomyelin, this contains the sphingosine instead of glycerol. Okay, so usually we have a glycerol backbone, but this one's gonna be sphingosine. And then it has only one fatty acid, and it has that phosphate head attached to the amino uh, alcohol. And then talking about amino alcohols, well, amino alcohols are found in glycerol phospholipids. And these are cholines, arenes, and ethylamines. And these are ionized at a physiological pH of 7.4. What's our physiologic pH of our blood? Hmm, 7.4, huh, interesting. All right, so then if you look at the chemical structures, and how they are similar or different. Looks like they're differing in uh, carbon hydrogen groups or on the nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, you have choline, serine, and ethylamine. Hmm. Then we have lectin and cephalin. And lectin and cephalin are types of glycerol, glycerol phospholipids that are abundant in the brain and nerve tissues. These are also found in egg yolk, beef germ, and yeast. Okay, so you can see, again, you have your choline group here for the uh, lectin, and you have the ethylamine here for the cephalin, okay? So talking about the structure and polarity of the phospholipids, well, we get to learn a little bit, or we get to stack on what we learned before. So the glycerol phospholipids have both polar and nonpolar regions that allow them to interact with polar and nonpolar substrates and substances, okay? They have a polar head, which contains the ionized al amino alcohol and the phosphate portion, which is strongly attracted to the water. They also have a nonpolar hydrocarbon tail, and that portion is soluble only in nonpolar substances, such as lipids. And these are the most abundant lipids in the cell membrane, and they play a very important role in cellular permeability. And so the way I remember it is hydrocarbon is just a lot of carbons, right? And the carbons are the ones that are really kind of weak and they're scared of water. And so that's gonna be your hydrophobic nonpolar area where your polar head is gonna be that, that phosphate group, okay? So here is a lovely picture that you can see the components of a typical glycerol phospholipid, which is gonna be again, the amino alcohol, the phosphoric acid, the glycerol, and the two fatty acids. And then you can also have the glycerol phospholipid with the polar head containing the ionized amino alcohol and the phosphate, while the hydrocarbon chains of the two fatty acids are made up with the nonpolar tails. And then in uh, C down here, you have a simplified drawing that's gonna indicate the polar uh, head region and the nonpolar tail region. So why do we care? Well, a fun fact, Snake venom is produced by the modified uh, saliva glands of a poisonous snake, and it's ejected through the fang of that snake. Well, poisonous venom, snake venom contains phospholipases that hydrolyze phospholipids in red blood cells. So that was a mouthful, okay? So phospholipases that hydrolyze or break apart the phospholipids in the red blood cells, okay? So let's see how we're doing. So let's identify the following as a fatty acid, a triglycerol, an amino acid, or a glycerol phospholipid. Pause me and come back. So glycerol triolate is a triglyceride, right? Or triglycerol. The cephalin would be a glycerol phospholipid. The choline is an amino um, alcohol. And then the palmitic acid is going to be your fatty acid. All right. What about this guy here? Let's draw a condensed structural formula of cephalin 
that contains stearic acid and serine. So pause me and come back. All right, here you have your stearic acids here, and then you have your serine and how they are um, attached. All right, great job, you guys.